Harper. You know, there, there's so much great OER, and everybody here at the conference knows about it. And but you know, I'm a little bit biased towards the breadth and depth of the VC Campus Open Collection. I must admit, I agree. I'm I'm also a little bit biased to that. <laughs> um, thanks to the internet, creating, sharing, and adapting educational resources has never been easier. With just a few clicks, you can find repositories full of amazing resources, such as the BC Open Collection by BC Campus. You can also create books filled with videos and interactive activities, and share resources and files with students and teachers alike. Just as one example, a learner in a nursing program could be using the textbook Vital Sign Measurement. They would go online to the web book to read their assigned chapters, watch demonstrative videos, and check their understanding using interactive activities for exploring case studies. But wait, what can you do if you don't even have access to the internet? So for this conference, you went to the website, you clicked on a video, you're watching it right now from YouTube. Well, what would you do if you couldn't even access this conference? So for most of us, Internet access is not even a question that we think about too much anymore. Yet statistics say that 37% of the world lacks quality internet access or any internet access. And in British Columbia alone, the provincial government estimates that 24% of the households, largely in rural and some of the rugged um, distributed areas, don't have internet connectivity. Other situations where access to the internet might occur are incarcerated learners, uh, refugee learners, learners displaced by natural disaster. There are students who don't have sufficient data plans to access their internet content offsite. And there's probably more that you can think of. So even with the great BC Campus open content collection, you can get it available in print. Works very well, except when you get to one of these interactive exercises or a video, it's gonna let you know, go to this URL. And again, without any internet, what can you do with that URL? you know, a real problem. And um, part of BC campus's mandate is to increase accessibility in BC, uh, BC's post-secondary system. Um, increasing accessibility not only means giving access to those with disabilities, but also addressing any barriers one might face when trying to access these resources, including a lack of internet connection. And that's why BC campus is exploring an alternative way um, for accessing our OER called Calibri. Calibri? What's that? In the words of Learning Equality, who created Calibri, Calibri is an ecosystem of open digital products and tools centered around an offline-first learning platform. It is especially designed to enable quality teaching and learning with tech, but without internet. Before diving into all the details, let's first see how the same content we saw online before might be accessed in a location where Calibri is provided. So let's say a, a, another learner is going to go to um, a learning center or a local school that perhaps has Calibri available. Again, they have access to a large amount of content from, say, BC campus or other content that's been provided, but they're there to work on their uh, work in their health program. So they're going to go to their section on vital signs measurement, and they can work through the chapters they can read, then they can get access to the videos and the learning activities, the same interactivity H5P that appears online. So it's not the exact same experience, but hopefully you can see that you are covering both and there's no mysterious URLs that you can't click. Um, so this is done by the local provider working with the platform part of Calibri called Studio, where you put together content you might want to use, or in this case, we're uploading the BC campus content. And we have to structure it in a manner that allows it to be delivered in small pieces at a time to operate over local bandwidth, which is not great in the Calibri uh, server environment. And then on top of that, uh, there are things that the Calibri system offers a facility. You can uh, be able to put students in groups or cohorts. You can assign coaches or tutors to help them monitor and track progress. And then some of that progress that the students are doing through uh, can be checked to see how they are doing in, in their program. So that's Calibri in a nutshell. What does it take, um, Harper, to set up Calibri? So first of all, you need a Calibri server. Um, a server is a device where the Calibri app is installed in order to transmit the chosen educational resources to other client devices. 
you can run a server using devices such as a desktop computer, a laptop, virtual machine, or even a Raspberry Pi. The materials provided can be set up by taking the server to a location with internet connection to import content that you've selected and organized in Calibri Studio. Um, and alternatively, your content from Calibri Studio can be loaded onto storage devices and sent to remote locations where it can be uploaded to a Calibri server. So what we're talking about here is not just transporting the BC campus open content to another server. Calibri environment allows you to mix and match bits. So you could say, take some of these chapters from vital signs measurement and add into the sequence some things such as osmosis.org has videos on cardiology and practice exercises. And also you can get Khan Academy videos um, on such things that come from the um, nursing exam prep, a lot of good practice exercises. So it's a way of doing OER in an environment again that is offline first. So um, this is really the idea, again, that you can put together a sequence of content that are really a specific and pertinent to your local learners. So now that we've given you an idea of what Calibri is and what it can do, how can you give it a try yourself? There are several ways. If you simply want to get a taste of what Calibri is like without installing the app and you have internet access, you can first check out the Calibri demo site. This site allows you to either explore as a learner with or without an account, or as a coach with an account. As the name suggests, this site is only for demonstration purposes. If you want to try Calibri with its full offline functionality, then you can install the Calibri app. For our purposes, we're running Calibri on a spare laptop, as an example. You can find all of the instructions on how to install and access Calibri at calibri.readthedocs.io. If you're specifically interested in trying out BC Campus content in Calibri, you can contact us uh, and we will share the token for our channel with you. You can do that by emailing alan at calibri at bccampus.ca or me, Harper, at hfriedman at bccampus.ca. All right, so uh, thanks for coming to our online presentation about offline OER. And we really hope you think about these questions and ideas and contact us through the channels Harper mentioned before or within Discord during the community. But we're really eager to see what you think of this idea. Um, so some of the things that we're interested in <laughs> <laughs> are um, thinking of other use cases of um, Calibri that perhaps we didn't list above, and also just what other questions you may have about this and when uh, possibly you'd be interested to know when this well, BC Campus content might be available in Calibri. And if you are someone with a large amount of content, this might be another avenue that you want to explore to make your content available to people who are in um, offline first environments. We've created a Google Doc with links to information and resources we've spoken about in this video. And we also have a section for you to put your ideas, questions, and comments. So thanks again. That's a wrap. And we will look forward to seeing you around the conference.